Okay. Oh, by the way, the Mishnah, they've really been very helpful, I have to say, just in general. Yeah. Uh, when my Gerusa were doing Makos for about the 10th time or something, but we come across these things, and I say, you know, the Mishnah says this, and says, hey, says, oh, yeah, you know that. How do you know that? You know, I say, oh. <laughs> because I learned Mishnah. Oh. Yeah. It's really been very good. Uh, okay. It, it really does help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ted, Ted, Bob, Ted, base. Regarding a barrel that is full of Tahoe beverages and a siphon is in it, which is surrounded by a sealed cover and placed under the same roof as a corpse, Reshama says the barrel and the beverages are Tahoe, but the siphon is Tome. And Basil says even the siphon is Tahoe. Uh, subsequently, Basil reversed themselves so to rule in accordance with the view of Beit Shammai. Regarding a sherry that was found beneath the floor of an oven, the oven is Tahoe for I say, for I. For I say it fell while alive and only did now did it die. Regarding a needle or ring that was found beneath the floor of an oven, the oven is Tahoe, for I say they were there before the oven arrived. If they were found in the ashes, the oven is Tahoe, for there is nothing to which it can be attributed. Regarding a sponge that absorbed Tahoe beverages and was dry on the outside and it fell on the airspace of an oven, the oven is Tahoe, because the beverage will eventually emerge. And eventually, a piece of turnip or reed grass, or reed grass, Rebbe was Tahoe in these two cases. Okay. Okay. So again, we, we continue with the with the theme of um, of things that are absorbed. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Um, and and uh, if you have a tummy liquid absorbed into something and it goes into the airspace of a kliferis, which we're using as the oven in our in our case over here. Okay. Um, so what's actually considered absorbed? We, we we know in the case of the chicken, a live chicken, that is that the chicken insulates against whatever it swallowed. Okay, but uh, a sponge does not, and there's a machlokis about a turnip. Um, shards of earthenware. Now, charasin shenish tamish behen mashkin tamein. So you have, um, you had a let's say a flask that that was used for a, a tame liquid, and it broke, and now you've got a piece of a piece of this shard that that has got liquid absorbed in it because it's earthenware. Things will it will absorb things, okay, but it's dry on the outside. So now the question is, uh, is this considered an insulator? Naflu la'avir hatanur, it came into the airspace of the of the oven, husa katanur. Now, if the if the oven was was burning, then we say it becomes tamay. Why? Because the because the heat will cause the, the liquid to bubble out of the of the earthenware. It will eventually come out. Um, as opposed to obviously if the oven is, is cold. That means that it's uh, then it, then the liquid that's absorbed in the cheres is not going to come out under normal circumstances. So so that would not make it tame. It's uh, if it's completely dry on the outside. That's got it's considered uh, something balua. It's not uh, okay. The chen begefes chadashana. Gefes is um, they've translated as mark, and neither of us know, would know what mark is unless we uh, unless we looked into the commentary and, and understand that that that's the remainder of what's crushed. And like when they take the grapes and they and they squeeze and they squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, and all the all the usable juice is out. So what's left behind is called is called mark or gefes in Hebrew. Okay, so so this has has got little bits of liquid in it but it wasn't it just wasn't worth it for us to keep pressing it because at this point there's an expression the juice isn't worth the squeeze <laughs> okay um <coughs> but um so this so this has got the same din as as earthenware um if it if it goes into an oven cold it's tower because the, the the juice is already all, all squeezed out but if it's a hot oven then the last little drops are going to bubble out Okay. Okay. So if that was so 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 um about the Ishana Tahor, if it was old, if it if the if the um and what it constitutes old, I think we we said it's an, a year old. Um if it's old, let me just see what the, the commentary is actually on the next page. Um yeah, it's 12 months. Right. So so once it's 12, uh, once 12 months have passed. It's considered completely tried out, and even if you heat up the oven, it would remain tower. Okay. But however, if it's if it's well preserved, 12, 12 months old, twelve months is just a rule of thumb. But if you know for sure that there's uh, that there's liquid in there, it can it'll still become tummy for after three years. Okay, and three years love davka. That's just like guzma. Who's going to keep 
my, uh, the, the stuff for three years. Okay. Mishnavav Hagefes Vazagin Shinasu Batara. Okay, so now these, uh, so, so we had somebody who was very careful in particular about making their grape juice, wine, whatever, and it was all done batara nicely. And then at the end, the, the gefes is left behind. And now, halchu alehim tameim, and now tame people walked on top of them. Okay, so now the interesting question is, and then more liquid came out of them after, this, after these tame people walked on them. So, the Mishnah tells us that this is Tahor. Why is it Tahor? Because at this at this point, it's now it, it, it's now um, nobody cares about this uh, about this liquid that's coming out. It's no longer it's no longer going to be put into the vat. It's no longer it just it just happens to be a liquid. The only problem is that now being a liquid, it it might start making things tummy. And this is where we start falling back into the rule of Machshirin. Where it's got to be lirtsono, you've got to have ratson to to make the to make it come out to to have this liquid come out, um, okay. And and even though there are tummy people who are walking on top of this liquid, it's like ilu, it's not there. It, 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 no, they didn't intentionally pull it out, and therefore the liquid itself is not even susceptible to tumor. Okay. She mitrilasan nasu but but the Mishnah adds a little proviso over there. That the reason why they're tahor is because they were initially made batara. Okay, why does it make a difference? Now let's just say that it, that the initial um, wine making had been done batuma. Somebody who didn't really care or amaharet or whatever who was making wine didn't care that it was tame or not. Okay, now he's taken away all the wine and now you've still got this this uh, mark left behind, um, and uh, and now it gets squeezed again. Okay. Now, what happened was that the, because the mark itself was lying in the in the grape juice that as it was being squeezed, it probably absorbed back some of the liquid that was uh, the, the, uh, that that it was sitting in. And since that liquid was tame, there was there was there was tame grape juice inside there, and that already now has has been you know that's a liquid that we wanted. And since uh, since it's been reabsorbed, and now it gets uh, and now it gets squeezed out again, that tame liquid is still tame. And it can still cause and transmit tumor, so that's why the first the first batch had to be made batara for our condition to work. Okay. Okay. Now um, another case of things being absorbed. We completely switch contexts, and now we're talking about a a, a spindle kush shibala esat sinora. So you see the di little diagram over there on four twenty eight. Um, right. There's a little there's a little hook on yeah. the on the end over there. Right. Okay. And um, it had an accident, and the hook got pushed into the into the um, into the wood. Okay. Now that particular shape is a difficult one to understand how that could be pushed into the wood because the the hook looks like it's wider than the wood. But let's take an easier an easier case is of a malma chibala sedarvan, and an ox goad that swallowed its nail. So an ox goad is it's also just a plain long stick with a with a with a nail on the end that's meant to prod the oxen into into moving okay so now that nail got pushed up the shaft of the um of the stick so now you've just got a stick that's got a a nail hiding in the middle okay or another case is levena shibala esetabas or a brick that swallowed a ring right a ring uh, the, you made clay and a ring was uh, was inside the clay and all of these things started out tower this is not a sufficient insulation to prevent the the metal key from becoming tame inside an ohela mace to to prevent it from becoming tame it would have to be completely shielded like like uh, like with a tamid pasil but even the tamid pasil as we saw with that machlokis that we saw yesterday with Hilal and shamai um is uh, even even that a metal clee would not be protected unless it's actually like inside the walls of the of the of the stopper or something like that, and not in the airspace. Okay, um, so so that's not enough to prevent tumor being transmitted by ohel. However, uh, it also hisitan hazav. If a if a zav moved them, remember a, a zav can can transmit tumor by moving things. Right. That will also make it tame. By the way, the stick. The, the actual stick itself does not become tame because it's pshute cleates. It's just a straight cleates without a, without a receptacle, so it's impervious to tumor. We're talking here about the hook or the or the spike or, or whatever it is. 
Okay. Naflu la avirat tanur tahor. And if they subsequently, so, so um, this thing that became tame and then went into the airspace of, uh, of an oven, timo'ohu also makes it tame, even though it's surrounded by wood, the wood doesn't insulate. However, what it does do is it does protect against touch. Now go behind kika shel truma tahor. If 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 they touched a, um, a a loaf of truma, that doesn't that doesn't make it tame because the the wood itself remains tahor. Okay, and we're talking about transmitting truma through touch. That's uh, that that the wood is sufficient to protect against. I don't understand how the hook can become tame. You know, it's it's, it's susceptible to truma. Yeah, it's because metal. It has it because it's metal. That's right. Okay. Right, it's not. It doesn't have a receptacle, but metal doesn't need a receptacle. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. We're seeing the streeter again. Interestingly, uh, article changed their tu tune in the commentary between this Mishnah here and uh, Ches Gimel, uh, which where we also mentioned the streeter. Their streeter was like a leather cloth or something. Right. Um. Here it's it's more of a of a bowl, um, and um. Possible in terms is used for both, but and they, they do have a little bit of uh, a bit of arichas in the commentary about you know the street of here, the street of there. But uh, uh, for our purposes over here, it's a um, so they, they mentioned here it could be a flat piece of leather or, or cloth, um, but it's easier to understand this mission if we treat it as a uh, as a flat earthenware utensil on which bakers knead dough. So it doesn't have a receptacle in it itself. Uh, is not susceptible to tumor. Okay, so now we took the streeter and put it on top of the oven. Okay, mukaf tamid pasil, and we sealed it with clay. So now this oven is nicely sealed at, and it's impervious to tumor. Okay, all good so far, except nistak min hatanur velasrida. The seal got cracked. Okay. Now how, now, how much of a crack does it need to have in order to invalidate the tzamed pasil, the uh, the seal? Okay, shiro melo pi marda shelo nichnas. It's the it it needs to have a hole the size of an ox goad. Okay, that's like a stick. So the so the so um and the uh, the shear that we give in in the commentary over here. Is basically a tefach circumference or a third of a tefach um, in uh, in diameter. Yeah. Okay. So and and Chachamim say it doesn't have it, it doesn't have to be big that big that that the thing would actually insert. Just that if you put it on top of it, it's the it's about the same size because in order to insert it, the hole would have to be slightly bigger. Okay. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Nichnas. No, he, he's more makel here. He says that in order for it to uh, to be to be judged to 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 invalidate the cement basil, you'd have to be able to insert the ox code. Nistika hasrida. Now, what happens if the if the cover itself became cracked? Okay, shiro kamalo pimar nichnas. Again, it's the we're using the ox code, but this time Chacham will say it has to be a bigger hole in the in the actual cover in order that that the, the ox code would be able to in, to be inserted. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Shelo Nichnas, and he switches position over here. He says uh, over here, um, he's more machmir on the um, on the cover than he, than he was on the seal, um, and uh, and he says it just have to be the same size, not even if it can't get in. Haya Agol, what happens if the crack was rounded? Well, what we mean by that is that instead of going straight down, it was at a diagonal, uh, so it didn't go. You could, you, uh, so now Eno Eno So Aroch. You don't look at it as if it's uh, as if it went straight through. Yeah, there has to be um, a, a, a hole with that with that diameter in one place, going vertically down into the oven in order for it to invalidate it. And if it's at a diagonal, then that's a cooler, mm. and, it's, uh, and it doesn't necessarily invalidate the seal. Okay, that's it. It's let's go to um, the base. Uh, if one set upon upon a if one set upon upon a stone and upon an oven or upon a stone and upon an oven or upon a stone and a kufa, it is tummy. If one set upon upon a stone and upon a second stone or upon a stone and upon the bedrock or upon the stone and upon a wall, it is tahoe. 
This was the Soba of the Nazirim, in Jerusalem that was built against the bedrock. The, the Soba of butchers, when he places one stone alongside another stone, and one of them became Tome, the others do not become Tome. These, these three stones are made of two stones. If one of the outer stones became Tome, the part of the middle one stone that serves the Tome stone is Tome, and the part that serves the Tower stone is Tahoe. <coughs> Excuse me. If the tower stone was removed, the middle stone becomes entirely tame. And if the stone was removed, the middle the, st the stone was removed, the middle stone becomes entirely tahu. The two outer stones become tame if the middle stone was large and one allots as much as it is needed to get a set of pot on either side and the remainder is tahu. But if it was small, it is entirely tame. <coughs> If the middle stone was removed, if, if a large cauldron can be set upon the stove, it is tame. If the stone was returned, it is tahu. If the stone was plastered with clay, it becomes susceptible to tumor from when one heats enough to cook an egg on it. Two, stone, two stones were made into a stove and became tummy, and then one placed a stone next to one of the tummy stones on one side and a stone next to the tummy side on the, on the other tummy stone. On the other side, half of one tummy stone is tummy and half of it is tahu, and half of the other tummy stone is tummy and the other half is tahu. If the tower stones were removed, the others returned to the state of tumor. Okay. Is that it? Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay, Midos. Midos. Did we say we do? I don't know we do a million. We didn't say that yesterday. I'm sorry. I don't think we said that yesterday. Uh, okay. Okay. Did you get it? Okay. okay. Midos, Aleph, Aleph. I assume Aleph, Aleph. Mm -hmm. So we didn't I ask you yesterday. So, all right. Um, okay, Aleph, Aleph. The Kohana would stand guard in three places in the holy temple, in the chamber of, of, of Itinas, in the chamber of the Ray, in the chamber of the Hall of Fire. And the Levim would, Levim would stand guard in 21 places, Levim would be at the five gateways of the Temple Mount, four Levim at the four corners of the Temple Mount on its inside, five Levim at the five gateways of the Temple Courtyard, four Levim at the four edge corners, and the outside, and one Levim in the chamber of the offering, and one Levim in the chamber of the curtain, and one Levim behind the curtain of the ark cover. Okay. The um, officer of the Temple Mount would make the rounds to each and every guard and torches were lit up for him. And any guard who did not stand the officer of the Temple would say to him, peace, upon, uh, peace unto you. And if it was apparent that he was sleeping, the officer would strike him with his staff and he also had permission to burn his garments. And they would say, what is the noise in the courtyard? It must be the sound of a lady being beaten and the clothing being burned because he fell asleep on his watch. But Eliezer the Yaakov says, one time they found my mother's brother sleeping on his watch and they burned his garments. The Temple Mount has five guideways, two called the gates in the south, and we use for it. Get out of here. We use for entering the, the call. We use for entering. Use entering and exiting. Components in the west was used for entering and exiting. Tadi in the north was not used for any purpose. The eastern gate upon it was depicted a likeness of Shushan, the capital of Persia, uh, through it. The Kohen Goddard was to burn the power of Duma and the power itself, and all the others assisting the power would exit the Mount of Olives. Okay. Now we have the cars. Yes. Cars, Aleph Dalit. If a donkey, uh, which was previously given birth and one who had not yet given birth, now bore two males, he must give one lamb to the Kohen, and if they bore a male or female, he must set aside one lamb for himself. As it states, the first one of the donkey you shall redeem with a saw, and it may be a sheep or goats, a male or female, old or young, perfect or blemished, and he may redeem with it many times. He enters the pen to be tied, and if he dies, one may derive benefit from it. One may not redeem a firstborn donkey with a calf, an undomesticated beast, a slaughtered animal, a trafer, or a hybrid, or a koi. But Elazar permits redemption with a hybrid because it is a saw, but it permits redemption with a koi because it is doubtful. If he gave it to the kohen, the kohen may not keep it until he sets aside a lamb or kidney instead. One who if one sets aside a lamb for redemption of a firstborn donkey and it dies, Rebellion is says one is responsible for it, as with the five celebrants of the sun. The Kalman, however, say one is not responsible for it, as it with the redemption of Mysa Shani. The Bishua Ritonic testify concerning the redemption of the firstborn donkey that died that there was nothing here for the Kohen. If the first donkey di dies, Rebellion is says it must be buried, and benefit may be derived from the lamb. The safest, however, say it may not be buried, and the lamb belongs to the Kohen. Okay, Baba Bash. Let's do Baba Basra. Vav. One who says, this is my son, is believed, and if he said, this is my brother, he is not believed, but if he must share his portion with him. If he died, the possessions return to their place. The possessions fell to him from another source. His brothers inherit with him. If one died and a will was found tied to his thigh, it was void. If we grant the title to someone else with it, whether from the heirs or not, his words are upheld. 
one who signs over his property to his sons must write from today and after death. And these are the words of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Yossi says he need not. If one signs over his possession to his son to take effect after his death, the father cannot uh, sell them because they are signed over to the son, and the son cannot sell them because they are in the possession of the father. If the father went and sold them, they are sold until his death. If the son went and sold them, the buyer has no share in them until the father dies. The father may detach produce and give it to eat to whomever he wishes, and whatever produce he leaves over, detached from the field, belongs to the heirs. If he leaves older and younger sons, the older ones are not supported at the expense of the younger ones, nor are the younger ones fed at the expense of the older ones, rather they divide it equally. If the older ones marry, the younger ones may marry. If the younger ones said, we will marry just as you marry, we do not listen to them, and rather whatever their father gave them, he gave. If he leaves older and younger daughters, the older ones are not supported at the expense of the younger ones, nor are the younger ones fed at the expense of the older ones. Rather, they divide equally. If the older ones marry, the younger ones may marry. If the younger ones said, we will marry just as you married, we do not listen to them. This is the stringency of daughters over sons, over sons and the daughters are fed at the expense of the sons, but they are not fed at the expense of the daughters. Okay. That was Next. it. Go on to okay. Yoma. Yoma. Uh, um, after the ark was taken away, a stone was there was there from the times of the early prophets, and it was called Sashia. Its high was three fingers above the ground, and upon it he would place the shovel. He took the blood from the one who was star stirring it. He then to the place he had previously entered, stood on the place he had stood, and sprinkled from it one time upward and seven times downward. But if he did not aim at sprinkling either above or below, rather the one like, like one who whips. This is how he would count. One, one, one plus one, one plus two, one plus three, one plus four, one plus five, one plus six, one plus seven, and then he exited and put the vessel on the golden stand, which was in the hole. They brought in the he goat, he slaughtered it, and received his blood in the basin. He entered the place that he had previously entered. Um, and he stood in the place he had stood and sprinkled from it, from it one time upward and seven times downward, but he did not aim in sprinkling either above or below, rather like the one who whips. And this is how he would count. One, one plus one, plus plus two, etc. He executed and put the vessel on the second stand, which was in the holy. If Yehuda says there was only one stand there, he took the ox's blood and put it down the high, put down the he goat's blood. He sprinkled from it uh, sir, at the curtain, facing the ark from the outside, one upward and one seven downward, but he did not aim. Then this is how he would count. He took the he goat's blood and put it down the ox's blood, and sprinkled from it the curtain, facing the ark on the outside, one upward and one seven downward. He emptied the ox's blood into the he goat's blood, and he poured the full vessel into the empty vessel. Um, that's it. That's it. And okay. finally, Yadayim. Did you dive in already? Nope. Oh, all right, all right. The Sadducees said, "We have a complete. We have a complaint against you, Perushim. For you say the holy scrolls are in the tongue and hands that touch them and herit, her, heretical. Herit, you know what books I mean. Do not read the tongue and hands that touch them." Rabbi Yochanan and Mitzak, I said, "Is the only thing we have against Perushim." Why? They say that the bones of Adonai are tahor, but the bones of Yochanan are the high priest of Tameh. They said to him that Tumah is on account of their affection, so that a person should not make the owner of the father and mother into spoons. He said to them, and regards holy scrolls, too, their Tumah is on account of their affection. But Herod, um, Herod, 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 I can't get this word out. Um, Heretical books are not held dear, but do not run the tummy their hands, um, by head tummy hands and touch them. The Jews say we have a complaint against you, Perushim, for you declare Tahara a stream of pouring liquid. The Perushim say we have a complaint against you, so you choose for you root Tahara, a canal of water that flows from a cemetery. The Jews say we have a complaint against you, Perushim, for you say if my ox or my donkey cause damage, they are liable. If my slave or maid servant causes damage, they are not liable. If I am liable for the damages of my ox or donkey, regarding for whom I am not responsible for the mitzvahs, it is not, is it not logical that I should be liable for damages of my slave or maid servant, regarding whom I am responsible for their mitzvahs? He said to them, No, you can say so. You can say so regarding my ox and my donkey, but you have no understanding. But you can say, but you, can you say so regarding my slave and maid servant who do have understanding? Where I anger them, he will go and set fire to someone's haystack, and I will be liable to pay. Agali and Sadducee said, I have a complaint against you, Perushim, for you write the name of the ruler, ruler together with the name of Moses in the Dibble of Divorce. The Perushim say, We have a complaint against you, Agali and Sadducee, for you write the name of the ruler together with the name of the God in one column. Moreover, you write the name of the ruler above, the name, above and the name of the God below. As it is said, and Paul said, Who is Hashem that I should heed his voice to send out Israel? And he was smitten. What did he say? Hashem is the righteous one. Tomorrow is Uktin. Okay. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna run. Okay, bye. bye. Wonderful day. <laughs>